Hello and welcome to Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So I hope that you can understand me. I might sound a little bit different from normal, but I just been to the dentist and had two teeth removed yesterday. So my mouth is still a bit weird. I'm going to have to get used to, uh, just used to it, but it's okay. I don't, I don't think it should make any difference to talking because I talk using my throat, using my rather than all like my mouth, if that makes sense. So, um, the reason I kind of, I'm mentioning the dentist is I found it a little bit difficult. So I've never had two teeth out at the same time, you know, it's, and it's, it's a little bit of trauma for your mouth. I mean, it is, it's, it's, the mouth doesn't enjoy it. It wasn't painful, but it was uncomfortable having someone's mouth, a hand in my mouth. And most people listen to this have probably been to the dentist and had similar things done. So it's, it's not an enjoyable experience and it's not supposed to be, I guess. And although I do remember something that took away my fear of the dentist. I didn't, I've never, like, wasn't, never really been hugely scared, but I didn't like it. You know, I used to put it off and avoid it, especially once I got old enough to be able to do that. When I was a kid, I didn't have any choice. Uh, but I saw this documentary, oh, it was like a, a news article. And this was in early 2000s, I think. And there was this little child, and he, it was a little news bulletin, a new, news item, you know. I think it was on the local news. And there was this small child that was severely disabled. And I think he'd only left his house, you know, like three times in his life, you know. He was, it was that bad, and he had all kinds of problems. Um, he could talk and he was a funny little kid. He was probably about seven, six years old or seven, you know, he was quite very, still very young. And he was smiling and the, the reporter said to him, why, um, he said, uh, I hear you're going to the dentist today, this afternoon. And the kid smiled. He said, yeah, I'm going to the dentist. And the, the reporter said, why are you smiling? You almost sound excited to be going. Why? And little kid said something that I'll always remember. He said, well, I'm excited because I've never been to the dentist before. Now, you know, you could go negative on that and say, well, well, yeah, he's not been before, so he doesn't know how awful it is. That's not what I took from that. I took the optimism of a small child to actually appreciate the fact that he was getting out of his home to do something new, to experience something new, and to have that uh, attitude, that positive attitude that's natural. You know, you can't teach a, a little child that. That's a natural attitude. Is, I changed my way of looking at it. Because really, dentists are magicians. They are, they do amazing things. They make pain go away. Whether it's through a filling, or whether it's through having to extract the tooth, or whether it's root canal, which is something obviously <laughs> no one wants to have, I guess. But 
they're magic men and women, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. Because two fake is awful. It's horrible. So, and I realize you might think, well, what's this got to do with relaxation and sleep or whatever? Well, I'm coming to that now. Having had my attitude changed like 20 years ago about the dentist, I didn't have that. There's also, there's almost like a, a societal fear, a shared societal fear of the dentist. Like it's, if you, if you're not scared of going to a dentist, there's something wrong with you. You know, it's expected when actually, if you go to a dentist because of a toothache, you should be looking forward to going there because you're going to come out having sorted out that problem. And the toothache's going to go away. Hopefully, forever or for at least a few, you know, a few years, you know, depending on the situation or a few months, you know, you might have to have more treatment in a few months, but that toothache's going to disappear. And you can just get on with your life. Now I'm not here, to, you know, to tell you how wonderful dentists are because they are. We're lucky to have them. Doctors, dentists, nurses, whatever. You know, life would be very, very difficult or more difficult without them. But that's not what this recording is about. Even though I have a, a positive attitude towards dentists. While I was actually in the dentist chair, I haven't been told that I needed two extractions. I'd only ever had two extractions in, well, as an adult, uh, and two separate extractions. And the last one I had was a bit of a nightmare. Because the, the dentist couldn't get the tooth out. And in the process really damaged my gum. So I ended up in more, more pain than I went in there with. But yeah, the, the, the gums heal very quickly. I mean, this doesn't hurt anymore, really. It's a little bit, a little bit tender, but compared to yesterday, it's almost like 70, 70% less pain, which is phenomenal, just overnight. Um, and it's not throbbing the way it was before when it was aching, you know, the toothache. So I'm sitting in this chair. Okay, this is probably a bit long-winded, and I realise that. I was sitting in this dentist chair, and... I started going into panic mode. My breathing changed and I really thought, oh, this isn't good. My mouth was numb. So I think it, what it was is a loss of control. I didn't have control of the situation in a way that I wanted to. Now, of course, I could have just said stop at any time. You know, I was in control. And generally, we're all in control, even when we think we're not. There's consequences to that. You know, there's consequences to just standing up and walking out of your job. But you do have the ability to do that. You know, there's consequences to uh, any situation, I guess. There's always, not necessarily bad consequences, but if I'd have stopped and said, oh, stop. And walked out of the dentist. I'd have gone through all that, you know, uh, all of those anaesthetic injections for nothing. Gone through the whole process for nothing. And what, what would I do next? I'd go home and I'd still have a toothache. In fact, I wouldn't just have a toothache. I'd have half a tooth in my mouth because it had already been breaking the tooth up to get it out. So, 
I kind of wanted to stick it out. I've never walked out in a situation like that before. I've always stuck it out. Because that's just the, just the logical thing to do. I can't walk out of a dentist halfway through a procedure. I can if I choose to, but I choose not to because that's causing me more problems. Plus the chances are the dentist won't see me again. Depending on the situation, he did seem like a really nice bloke, so I'm pretty sure if I stop, said stop, and explain to him how I was feeling, he probably would have let me go down into the cha- into the waiting room, seen the next person, then see me again. You know, he seemed like a really, really gentle, kind person, so that I imagine that's what would have happened. So I'm sitting there, and I'm having, my breathing is too quick. And I'm feeling strange. I'm probably hyperventilating a little bit. I'm breathing through my mouth. For some reason, I'm struggling to breathe through my nose. Because I've got my mouth wide open. And... I think to myself, oh, what am I going to do here? And then a part of me thinks, well, I make these recordings. And, you know, it's, it's, it's easy. It's fairly easy to relax when you're sitting on your sofa or lying down on your bed. No distractions, nothing really, uh, do you need to think about in that moment? And it's, it's almost like a perfect scenario in a way to just let go and allow your mind to slow down because really your mind doesn't have anything to really focus on when you're at home. Maybe you've got the lights off. You're just in your recliner or just sitting in a comfy sofa. Or, as I said, lying down on your bed. There's nothing to think about. And if you've got me talking to you, that in itself is a distraction from the thoughts in your mind. And... When you hear my voice, especially if you listen regularly to my recordings, whether these ones or other ones that I do, you'll, you may notice that as soon as the recording starts to play, you automatically feel more relaxed in your mind just starts to slow down, just naturally. Maybe even the thought of lying down and or sitting comfortably and listening. You know, the 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 build up to it, the decision, or oh, I'm now gonna listen to a recording, listen to a podcast. And you may start to have a, a sense of well-being, a sense of comfort, uh, familiarity maybe. So I'm sitting in a dentist chair and I, I'm kind of thinking this to myself. Well, I do this at home. i been doing this for, blimey, it's... Over over one and a half decades, I've been making recordings online for people to listen to. So I'm thinking, okay. And I, d- I pretty much chose the most simple thing to do. But it worked. It really did work. Uh, I basically counted down from a hundred. 
Now, it wasn't to fall asleep. All it was is to help me relax. Also to give me something to focus on. That was both internal and external. Now you might think, what do you mean external? Well, I was saying the word in my mind. But I was also seeing the number of it. And I was seeing the number in my eye, in my mind. And it almost felt like the number that I was seeing was external. I know it wasn't. I know it was internal. And saying it out loud in my mind, it felt like I was actually saying it. Rather than just thinking it. So you could think of a number. And you could look at a number on a piece of paper. Or you can actually say it out loud in your mind. And it's different. With your eyes closed, you can see a number, which is different from just thinking about a number. If you see it in big, you know, big letters, I'm saying letters, but you know, big numbers, uh, maybe bright colors, whatever, it has an effect. It's a distraction. And although it is, Internal, obviously, it feels almost external. And it really was a good distraction. It also did help me to feel more relaxed. It calmed me down. Something to focus on. And I admit it, I wasn't giving it my whole uh, focus. Because I could still feel this thing rummaging around in my mouth. So, what I was doing was giving less attention to the pressure and the, you know, the, the physical pressure of what was going on inside my mouth. I didn't forget about it altogether. I didn't completely um, block it out. It was still there. I could still feel it. I could still, still knew that there was someone doing that. I still knew where I was. You know, I didn't become unconscious, didn't fall asleep. But my attention changed from being 100% on him and what he was doing to my mouth to help me, to probably 40% focusing on the counting. It's probably started off at 10% on the counting. And I'll be honest, at the beginning, I was trying to increase my focus on the counting. And I kept losing the counting and focusing on him. But part of the reason is because he was talking to me. And he was asking me if I was okay. You know, so he kind of broke my train of thought a little bit. Doesn't take much for me. (laughs) Um, But because it was counting, it was very easy to get back into it. It's very, it's not like I was reciting a, a passage, a passage from Shakespeare, you know, it was very easy to get back to the counting and it didn't matter if I got, if I went back to the right number or not. You know, if I was at 89 and I went to 75, who, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's not important. There's no awards to be won. There's no prize money involved. It's just going back to focusing on the numbers. 
and saying the number in my mind, seeing the number, big number, on the screen in my mind. Counting down. Now something I noticed that did happen is things seemed to speed up externally when I did this. Now I was doing this very slowly. There's no hurry at all with the counting. I had no idea how long I was going to be in the chair. I didn't know how long I was going to be there at all. I really didn't. How long it was going to take. Um, you know, two teeth. I, I just imagined twice the time. But not really because the preparation is the same amount of time, whether it's one, two, four, five, I guess. So it was, it was fairly quick. I was, in and out within 20 minutes. But things seem to move quicker outside. From the point where you're saying, well, now I'm going to start on the first tooth. And I said, yep, I nod. Put, I used to just put my thumb up so he could, like, to answer. Because uh, I didn't have a pad and paper on me. Pad and paper? Pen and paper. A pad and paper and some pens, some crayons. And I just thought, you know, I'll just do that as a good example, a good way of communicating with him. And as I was counting down, counting down, I uh, started at 100. I probably got down to about 72. When he said, that's all done. All done. I was like, oh, okay. And it's almost like there was some kind of time distortion. Like I was going in slow motion internally. He was going faster, but he wasn't really. He was just going normal speed. But because I was going slow motion internally, well, now it doesn't make sense, does it really? Because, I don't know, it just, it seemed to, it seemed slow internally, but outside seemed to go faster. I saw them saying on that one, because I just realised that actually for me to go fast internally would make Everything else slow, would it? I don't know. But I was going slow internally, and the actual outside stuff seemed to just shoot by. Maybe it's that whole, you know, waiting at a bank, knowing you've got to be, a, you've got to be back at work in five minutes, and there's a queue, and you're watching the clock. And although time... Almost is going so slow, the clock is moving a lot faster than it normally does. So that, you know, two o'clock point where you're supposed to be back at work, it's getting closer and closer. And that minute hand seems to be moving faster than normal. But everything outside of the clock, like the queue, is moving very, very slowly. The people at the counter of the of the bank are moving very slowly. That seemed to be what was happening there. So I was moving very slowly. I was the queue in the bank, and the dentist was the clock, kind of you know moving quick, which is ironic because well, not really ironic, but. You know, he had a clock on his wall that was broken. And it said something like 20 to 7. And it was just stuck on that time. It 
maybe he didn't want to be looking at the clock every all all the time, which I understand. I mean, it's good to sort of keep track of time, I guess, if you're seeing people that have appointments. But, you know, I don't think having a clock, I don't have a clock in here at all. I don't want to know what the time is all the time. Especially if I was working, you know, sitting in an office. You don't want to be seeing a clock. Because time seems to really go slowly at times. Especially in the afternoon. The morning shoots by. I always notice that. The morning shoots by. But then after lunch, between like two and five or six, you know, whenever you leave, it seems to go slower. That last hour. <laughs> I know it's psychological. So, counting down from a hundred, I find and I found slowed everything down for me in a situation where I was getting stressed. I was, um, yeah. But for, uh, I would say good reason, you know, it wasn't, it, it was, yeah, good reason. Having someone's hand in your mouth, removing your teeth is, it's not necessarily supposed to be a relaxing experience. I've managed to create it into one or into a more relaxing experience. It was, it was almost, I guess, the cold water and the hot water situation. Like the dentist was the hot water and I added some cold to make the hot water bearable. And by adding that counting down slowly, saying the numbers inside my head, and seeing, because I had my eyes closed, and seeing the numbers in my mind, big numbers, that was the cold water being added to the hot water, which was not just a dentist, but the whole scenario, the whole situation, a dentist, a dentist chair, um, there's other things, like there was a beautiful dental nurse there, and looking inside my mouth, which was a mess. Not, not before, hopefully not before the dental, you know, surgery started, but I felt very self-conscious. I did. And it, I think that's pretty natural. I'm pretty sure. And, you know, having someone's hand in your mouth, extracting teeth or whatever, it's, you know, it's it's not the most relaxing situation. But I managed to add that cold water to the situation. To the heat, the hot water of that scenario. And it did the trick. It really did. <sighs> You know, my breathing slowed down. I did feel more relaxed. I felt more in control without trying to be too controlling. I think I felt more in control, more not wanting to be in control, you know, not needing that. Um, because I wasn't in, you know, I, I wasn't really in control in that situation. In a sense of I wasn't, you know, someone else was doing something, but I gave him permission to do that. By sitting there, by going there, I gave him permission to help me. So there was that mentality of like, you know what? Okay. Dentists are not the most popular 
people in the world, which is a shame. It's dentists and vets, I think probably above doctors in a sense of no one likes taking their pet to the vet and no, no one likes taking, we don't like going to the doctors either, do we? But I guess it depends on the situation. But ultimately, they're all places that are there to help us. So going to the dentist doesn't have to be a negative experience. If you think about that small child, for him it was a positive experience because he'd only left his house three times before. I think he'd have been happy to go to a slaughterhouse or you know, he wouldn't care. Like going to go swimming in a swamp full of alligators. At least I'm getting out of the house. Probably not true, is it? But, uh, he, you know, <laughs> just go, go for a swim. Are you not coming in with me, mom? No, no, we'll just wait here. Uh, when are we going home? Don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about going home. So yeah, swimming with alligators, maybe not, but you know, he was looking forward and that changed my percept, my perspective. It also changed my, my, um, experience of the day because I'd had a bit of a crappy day feeling sorry for myself. And I spent a lot of my life feeling sorry for myself. It was one of my favorite hobbies and I still do it sometimes, but I try not to do it as much. I try to have more, uh, to get more in touch with what I'm grateful for and focus on perhaps what I do have, not what I don't have. And on that day, after seeing that little boy on the news, excited to go to a dentist because he hadn't been outside, he never gets to go outside. He's never been to the dentist before. I stopped feeling sorry for myself. For a few hours anyway. I stopped feeling sorry for myself. It was got a reality check. You know? And I know that some... Uh, I've seen this when I was a counsellor. Some people would come in to the counselling room... And they tell me something really, you know, difficult hearing, if you know what I mean, difficult stuff to hear. Uh, something really, really traumatic. And then they'd say, well, there's worse people off. There's people off that had much worse happen than, than to me. Now, there's, obviously there's truth in that. Of this, you know, there's truth in that statement from a, a logical perspective. And it's something that we're told as kids, isn't it? Oh, you think you've, you know, there's worse, worse things happening. There's kids worse off than you. Make sure you eat all your dinner. There's people starving in the world. You know, that kind of mentality that we used to go on uh, when I was a kid. And. It was, I mean, I used, to, I used to like say, well, why don't you send it to them then? There you go. There's my liver. I don't want to eat it. And, oh, there's people starving. It didn't make any difference to me. I was a little kid. I didn't, I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, it was only in the, um, probably, was it 85 that the, uh, you know, with band aid and stuff when, that all came out. I didn't really understand about that stuff. So being told that in the 70s, like, what are you on about? Well, you know, they can have my dinner if they want. That was my attitude. Well, that was a proper little shit, wasn't I? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, basically I went off on a tangent then, didn't I? So that's it. The, the basic thing is, I suppose, 
if you're going to go to the dentist to get in touch with the idea that they're there to help you, that you're going to feel better afterwards, maybe not immediately afterwards. You know, if you, if you've had a tooth extracted, you know, you're not going to feel great. And when the anesthetic wears off, it's going to be a, a bit of pain. But that pain is, it's a sign that the, the, the aching tooth is no longer there. The problem has been sorted. And the pain reduces, continuously reducing over time. It might take a few days before it's completely cleared up and healed. But it's because it's an open wound. It takes time. It takes a bit of time. And the fact that it stops hurting, gradually stops hurting quite quickly, shows you how healthy you are. Because your immune system, your healing system is working. Which shows how healthy you are as a human. Because that stuff is working perfectly. He said to me, he, he looked at it, he said, uh, cause I had to, when I had the teeth out at the end, he said, clench down on this, like a cloth thing, uh, like a white cloth, a bit of a weird color for something that's about to be stuck on blood, but, and I only held it for probably about a minute or two. And then he held it up and he looked, he said, oh, good, uh, starting to clot already. So the blood was starting to clot, which means the healing process was already starting immediately. So having trust in your own body, your own body's healing process, is also something that's quite a positive attitude to have as well and to remember which then takes away the stress and tension of going to a dentist because it's all going to work out fine. With that added counting down can help you to relax. Calm down your body, your mind. Gives you something to focus on as well. So it's a distraction. It's a distraction during the extraction. Uh, oh dear. I'm here all week. <laughs> so I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. It's a different kind of recording today, but it might, maybe it's useful. Maybe not. I don't know. I hope so. A little bit. So take care. Lots of love. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Be gentle with yourself as well. Bye.